Welcome to another episode of Game of Thrones Abridged, back by truly inexplicable popular demand. Uh, in Game of Thrones Abridged, we of course read through the Game of Thrones book with the speed of a greased lightning bolt called Usain ripping through the pages and uh, highlighting the fun bits and the good bits and the important bits and skipping all the boring ones, notably the descriptions of food. And we begin this episode with a with a retraction, uh, with 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 an acknowledgement of an error. Uh, we we did read a chapter out of order. We read uh, Daenerys chapter, thinking it was the first Daenerys chapter. It was the second. So yes, here at Alt Alt Swift X, we make mistakes <clears throat> sometimes. Uh, so we're going to begin by r- r- correcting that error, and we're going to read the true chapter, Daenerys one, Game of Thrones, beginning now. So Daenerys is in Illyrio's man since she's being presented by her brother Viserys with a soft silk. And Viserys tells her to touch it. Ooh, touch. Ooh, it's so soft. Ooh, look at the little... Ooh. And of course there's this whole sort of creepy, incestuous undertone, right? Because Viserys kind of wants to fuck his sister. Because it's like it's the whole Targaryen thing about, about like incest, keeping the bloodlines pure. They They did that scene in the Game of Thrones show as well. Uh, with Viserys sort of touching his naked sister in some uh, in some ways that might be deemed inappropriate by some, if not all. And in any case, this is our first Daenerys chapter, and Daenerys, the first sort of impulse we get from her is that she says that she's frightened by the touch of the silk, and she pulls her hand away, and she goes, oh, is it really mine? And, oh. and so w- the immediate impression that you get of Daenerys is of a very meek, girl, a frightened girl, an inexperienced girl, and one who relies heavily on her brother, though he is an abusive prick. Uh, So that's our initial impression. Uh, And we talk about uh, Magister Illyrio, who is of course their host in this manse. Magister Illyrio has been looking after them out of the generosity of his clogged cholesterolic heart. Uh, except, of course, he's not. He's actually scheming to put Aegon Targaryen, or rather Aegon Blackfire, or rather possibly his son on the throne, which is a whole other fucking thing, which we talk about in the video. But the point is that Danny is talking to Viserys, uh, and Danny talks, uh, and Viserys talks about how pretty that Danny is going to look, and says that tonight you will have to look like a princess. Uh, because, of course, there's this marriage. There's this marriage being proposed between Carl Drogo and Danny, Danny T, Danny T of Marine. Uh, and um, they're in the free city of Pentos. And, uh, and, and Viserys mentions how, oh, well, you know, Illyrio knows that I will reward him well when I come into my throne. Illyrio is no fool, which is, like, hilariously, like, ironic, right? Oh, I mean, maybe, it, it's pretty, uh, let's just say it's ironic, because Viserys, of course, is the fool in this situation, and he has no idea of the fucking conspiratorial machinations that Illyrio has at play here, son, because Illyrio is manipulating Viserys, but here Viserys thinks that he's smart, which is probably why Viserys is such an unlikable fucking character, right? Like, not only is Viserys, you know, abusive and unpleasant and wrong and stupid about a great many things, he thinks he's the best. It's it's like Joffrey, you know. Like I mean, we can. F- I mean, it's just like the real world. You can forgive people for being a bit shit. Lots of people are a bit shit. Fifty percent of people are below average at stuff, but we forgive them because that's statistics. The bell curve is a cruel mistress. Yet, it's the people who are shit but think they are the shit, chucking in the direct avenue there that are the issue. It's intolerable to see someone whose shit think they're the shit, and that is the problem with Viserys. Anyway, so... <clears throat> uh, so they talk a little about Illyrio and 
Patis, who is oh, he's this rich guy with these political connections. Uh, and and again, you know, we have this mention of how, you know, Daenery, you know, listens to the talk, but she doesn't question her brother because she fears the wrath of her brother of waking the dragon. So Danny is meek and passive, which again, you know, keep in mind how she is in later books and later seasons where she's so powerful and assertive. So again, we're laying the groundwork for a dramatic character transformation. Uh, and uh, Illyria talks about uh, uh, logistics uh, and tells her to stand up and, yeah, he touches her tits uh, and not in a brotherly way. Uh, and, and there's this line, he touches her hair almost with affection, which is just a really eloquent way to underline how uh, unpleasant the relationship is between Viserys and Daenerys. Uh, of course, Daenerys has been with Viserys these last years, ever since Robert's Rebellion, wandering around Essos. They called Viserys the Beggar King because he, you know, claimed to be the rightful king of Westeros, but was, you know, walking around in rags with no protection and no nothing. Um, it's actually an interesting sort of period that isn't discussed much or described much by the text or anything else. This time that, that young Daenerys and Viserys spent wandering Essos, which I think could warrant more exploration. But anyway, uh, so, yeah, so Viserys is touching her tits, uh, and they're in Pentos, and uh, they talk about uh, the, the the land a bit. Uh, they talk about, uh, yeah, there's Westeros, there's Essos, um, and Daenerys talks about how she feels about Westeros, because, of course, you know, Daenerys... Uh, thinks that she's the rightful ruler of Westeros, or at least she she comes to believe that. But of course, she's never been to Westeros. I mean, she was born on Dragonstone, but she hasn't been to Westeros proper, and she certainly has no memory or or, or much knowledge about the places of the place that she expects to fucking rule. Uh, so she, so she sort of meditates on that. Uh, in a moment in this particular chapter. Uh, and, yeah, so Daenerys, Daenerys reflects on her past and on the sack of King's Landing and her attitudes to the Lords Lannister and Stark. And, of course, I've already been introduced to the, to the Lannisters and the Starks, so it's interesting to see Daenerys' perspective on the Lannisters and the Starks, who she's never met, but who she's got impressions of through her brother Viserys. Uh, and, yeah, spoiler, it's not, it's not positive. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, so they sort of, uh, there's some exposition about this, about this history, which we all know. There's also mention of Willem Darry, who is someone who looked after them, uh, for a time, uh, Viserys and Daenerys after they fled Westeros. Uh, and he, he was a upstanding gentleman by most accounts, though, yeah, we don't really know anything about him. He died of a fever at some point or some shit, which is a convenient way to remove a character from a narrative. Uh, fever. Anyway, uh, so, page turn. See how authentic this is? It's authentic. It's real. Anyway, uh, so... It's just fucking talk of... Fucking Sir Willem and stuff. Well, no, there is something important. They talk about the house with the red door, uh, which was a place that Daenerys stayed with Viserys and Willem Darry for some time uh, in Bravos. There are conspiracy theories about how the, the place is actually in, like, Dawn or some shit. Uh, evidence isn't strong, uh, but that's 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 an alternative idea. But, the, but what the house with the red door represents to Danny is, like, a place of, like, home and, like, familiarity and, and, and comfort, and, you know, no doubt it's idealized in her mind, you know? it's It's not really about the place so much as it's about a state of mind and and, and and a feeling of of being whole and and at peace and in place. That's what the house with the red door represents to Daenerys. And she reflects on this throughout her arc, well into the fifth book. She always reflects back this house of the red door, which represents like a simple happy life in contrast to you know the violent conquering life that she that she also aspires to and also to the to the to the ruling you know misa you know queen of marine type sort of life as well like danny is pulled in all these different directions she's still not sure what kind of person she wants to be which i guess is important in any kind of protagonist in any kind of story you need to be in flux as to who you want to be 
maybe. Unless you're Victorian. Anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> we're so we're so speedy. We're moving so efficiently. No tangents here. This is a tangent-free zone. Get out of here, trigonometry. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, so they talk about yeah Danny's history, uh, and yeah the yeah Viserys was the beggar king, uh, and yeah Viserys is obsessed with with re- reclaiming his rightful rule of Westeros and such. Uh, ooh, I need a drink. Ugh, almost lost my page. <clears throat> oh, did lost did lose my page. Uh, but I've invested in a bookmark. <clears throat> so we shan't have that problem again. Moving along. So, <clears throat> they talk a little bit about slavery, a little bit of world building. They talk about a bath, uh, and uh, they talk about how hot the bath is, and Daenerys gets in, but she does not flinch or cry out, despite how scalding hot the bath water is. Um, and her brother often told her that it's never too hot for a Targaryen. Ours is the house of a dragon. The fire is in our blood. So this alludes to the whole fucking thing about, like, Targaryens. Are they are they fireproof? Are they not? Let's find out. Bojack Horseman. Uh, and space... Well, I did do a video about this, like, fucking long time ago, but um, the upshoot is that in the, in the show, Targaryens are fireproof. Or at least Daenerys Targaryen is. Jon isn't. He gets burned. So what the fuck is up with that? But in any case, Daenerys Targaryen is fireproof in the show. We saw that at Vazor Dothrak. In the books, not the case. Daener- uh, George R. R. Martin has said himself multiple times that the Targaryens are not immune to fire. They are perhaps more comfortable with heat than other people are, thus the bath. Uh, but Danny isn't fireproof, at least in the books. Moving on. So, Danny takes a bath, uh, and an old woman washes her hair, and such things go on, and they talk about Khal Drogo, the man who Danny is to marry, uh, they talk a bit about Targaryen incest and such, uh, they talk about how uh, the girl brushes Danny's hair until it shines like molten silver, uh, which is a pretty pretty description, I suppose, uh, and ooh, there's, there's perfume, and there's, and the perfume goes uh, on each wrist, behind her ears, on the tips of her breasts, and down on her lips, down there between her legs. It really, George, I mean, I think George has got one hand holding his pen, and another hand between his legs, if you know what I mean. I think George is enjoying this a little too much when he's describing the anatomy of his young female protagonists. Uh, but, hey, give him, give him, let him do what he may. Anyway, um, so that happens, uh, and she puts on some clothes, and there's Valyrian glyphs on a golden torque on her collar, which sounds kind of cool, like little metal ring around her neck with Valyrian shit on it. That sounds kind of interesting. Would have been nice if they did that in the show. Anyway, uh, but yeah, no, this is all quite accurate to the to the show as well, by the way. The, in season one, the adaptation from the books to the show was very close most of the time. Anyway, uh, so yeah, ooh, now you look all a princess, uh, and blah, 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 uh, and, oh, and Magister Illyrio makes an appearance. Um, and they, and yeah, they often note that Magister Illyrio is like very obese, but he moves with a surprising delicacy because, of course, he was a bravo back in the day, like a sword fighter, like a like a ostentatious, nimble fighting man, you know, uh, which is an interesting background for him. Like, of course, there's also that statue in his mans that they mention in Dance. Uh, he, 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 he was a young, physically agile man once, and now he's this sort of fat ruin, but his mind still is agile and sharp, which is an interesting, interesting thing to his character. Really, Illyrio is a very interesting character in HSO, but he doesn't get much, he gets, well, he only appears in season one of the show, which is a goddamn shame. Anyway, so Tani's looking pretty, uh, and Illyrio walks in, and Illyrio, here's something interesting. Illyrio says, may the Lord of Light shower you with blessings on this most fortunate day, Princess Daenerys. 
That's interesting. Why is Illyrio Metpatis invoking the Lord of Light, R'hllor, the fucking fire god, man? Why is that? That's weird. Isn't that weird? I mean, that, 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 that's a little bit like how Jack and Hagar invokes the fire god R'hllor uh, to Aya when he's discussing his rescue by Aya from the fire in the cart in the thing. But, I mean, that makes sense, because, like, Jacken was almost burnt alive. I mean, George R. R. Martin says this in a recent SSSSSSSSSSM, so spec Martin, uh, the, the reason why Jacken referred to the Lord of the Light was because he almost burned to death, but why does Illyrio invoke R'hllor at such a time? That is legitimately interesting. I think I might visit that later. Anyway, uh, so Viserys criticizes Viserys body shames Danny. He says she's too skinny. Uh, so there you go. Uh, and uh, and they talk about how yeah they just sort of objectify Danny for a while. Um, and oh, and and Viserys sort of talks about how the Dothraki are savages and they fuck sheep and whatever, which they also say about New Zealanders, and the truth is most New Zealanders don't fuck sheep. Not often, anyway. But the point is, Danny's pretty, uh, and Illyrio has this line about how, oh, you know, Viserys says, do you take me for a fool? And Illyrio says, I take you for a king. Kings lack the courtesies of common men. My apologies if I've given offence. Which is something that I think is repeated almost verbatim in the show. Uh, and it's a, good, it's a good line. It shows how Illyrio is totally willing to to fucking stroke the engorged pride of Viserys Targaryen. If it means gaining his favor, like Illyrio is, I mean, look, he's he's a giantly obese dude. He is fine with 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 uh, withholding his pride if it means getting to his goals. Must be a really important goal that Illyrio has, right? I'm whispering now. Illyrio wants to crown his son Aegon, king of Westeros. Oh, that was raspy and weird, eh? I'm still learning how to use my voice. Anyway, so that so stuff sort of fucking happens. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, and yeah, Viserys talks about how yeah, I only need ten thousand angry Dothraki to conquer Westeros and become king. Viserys is a tragic character because yes, he's shit, and yes, he thinks he's the shit, which makes him unlikable. But still, he spent his whole life obsessed with this dream of being king of Westeros, which is of course legitimate by virtue of the fact that he's son of the previous king of Westeros, Aerys Targaryen. So yeah, I mean, he he, he is a bit shit, but still, it's sad, you know, that the one thing he ever wants, he never reaches. I mean, it's sad, you know, sad. Anyway. So, blah, 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 um, oh, and Magister Illyrio straight up, straight up lies to Viserys, Magister Illyrio says, oh, the, the people in Westeros love you, they fucking secretly toast to your health, and, you know, they, they sow dragon banners, because they're so keen for you to win, which is great evidence of the fact that Magister Illyrio doesn't really support Viserys, he's fucking lying to him, he wants to create a distraction, so that his real man, Aegon Targaryen, can take over. Again, go watch the Varus video, that's where I explain all this shit. X plane. That's what that's what old Shift X does. Anyway. Uh, so blah 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 blah. Uh yeah, Viserys talks about how I will kill the usurper myself, he promised, and who had never killed anyone. Blah 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 blah. So Viserys is fucking an idiot. <laughs> um, and Illyrio indulges him, and Danny notices this, you know, so Daenerys may be meek, she may be scared, but she observes the things around her, you know, she learns from what's around her, which is the smart thing to do, if you are weak, if you are in a situation of vulnerability, the smart thing to do is to observe and learn and slowly grow stronger, that's what you should do. Anyway, so blah 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 bl
I talk about Dothraki for a bit. They talk about a palanquin. Palanquin is an interesting word. What's the etymology of that? I don't know. Moving on. Uh, and Viserys is uptight, and Illyrio is fucking soothing and schmoozing and fucking doing what he's doing, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, they mention how, yeah, um, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and the manse smells nice, it's got lemon and cinnamon, uh, and they mention a mosaic that depicts the Doom of Valyria, which would probably be pretty pretty. Mosaics are nice. Uh, and they talk fucking the titles of Viserys and the Dothraki ride in. They've got mustachios, they've got metal rings, they've got black hair, they've got braids and bells, they've got... They're very impressive, I'm sure. Uh, Dothraki, Dothraki blood riders, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. and they mentioned Jorah Mormont for the first time in the series. Uh, they mentioned that he's a sir. They mentioned blah 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 blah, and they mention um, Jorah's backstory, which is that he sold slaves, uh, which is a bit fucked up. And Illyrio says, "Oh, that should be fucking fine, mate. Slavery is great. Slavery is a great way to behave. Let's go on with the slavery way. It's okay." He sort of does that. Uh, blah, 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 uh, fucking, oh, and then Drogo arrives, and Danny, for the first time, gets to see the man who she is to marry, uh, and Drogo is tall, yet light, and graceful, like a panther, uh, he's got skin, the colour of polished copper, he's got mustachios bound with gold and bronze rings, which, you know, I mean, gold and bronze rings. I mean, I'd be down for that. <laughs> uh, and uh, blah, 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 blah. And so they present Danny to Drogo. Um, they mention Drogo's buttocks. How great is the word buttocks? <laughs> I love that word. And they they talk about the braids of the Dothraki. That's actually kind of interesting. So the so the Dothraki each have a ponytail, a long braid, which the which is cut if ever they are defeated in battle. So the so the Dothraki with the longest braid is the Dothraki who is a veteran of many combats and has never been defeated. A status symbol growing from their head, which is cool. Although you'd think it would, it, it would preference the Dothraki who happen to grow hair fastest. I mean, that's probably a thing, right? Some people grow hair faster than others, right? I don't really know. In any case, so Danny is, is, is presented to Drogo, who is this very impressive fellow. Uh, and, um... Danny reflects a bit about a place in Dothraki's, in Illyrio's home, in Illyrio's manse. She talks about how it doesn't feel like a true home to her, because a true home is the house with the red door. Uh, and and Viserys talks a bunch about how he wants to take over Westeros, and he and he does that. He he delivers that terrible, impactful line. I'd let Drogo's whole callous off. Fuck you, if need be, sweet sister. All 40,000 men and their horses too, if that was what it took to get my army. So that sort of emphasizes the fact that Viserys is a cunt, and he wants Jani only as much as he's as she's useful to his goal of taking over Westeros. So Viserys is not a great guy. Uh... <laughs> But he also says, oh, smile and stand up straight so that you look good for Drogo. And Danny does. Because in this first chapter of Daenerys 1, a Game of Thrones, he is meek and weak and passive. Which only makes more significance her growth as a character later when she becomes assertive and powerful and queen of Marine. So thank you for listening to this nonsense. That was Daenerys 1 for Game of Thrones. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm uploading these sort of by the moment, by the minute. So if you're enjoying these, uh, please let me know. Please comment. Please like. Please do those things. And I will upload more. Thank you for listening. 
and good night and good night